the Royal Navy turned its attention back to the challenge. The institution of slavery was formally abolished. Slavery the Abolition Act. 1833. I'd put this in act out to, I don't like slavery. 25 vessels and 2,000 officers and men were on the station, supported by nearly 1,000 crewmen. Experienced fishermen recruited as sailors from what is now the coast of modern Liberia. It's worth noting that this was not a pleasant job, and the mortality rate was the five rate times was higher for f compared with fleets in the Mediterranean or in home waters. <laughs> to help incentivize the crew, money was actually given to like. each crew per slave that they freed. But there was a real zeitgeist oh. in Britain for the abolition of slavery. Mm, what's the catch? For example, the pursuit and capture of slave ships became celebrated naval engagements, widely reported back in peacetime Britain. They became a source of national pride. So it's no wonder That's that so ironic, many of the crews isn't it? really did have an evangelical zeal about the anti-slavery patrolling. However, I don't want to give the impression that this was all for humanitarian reasons. There's no doubt that Britain, in her foreign Definitely policy, not. used her anti-slavery laws as a stick with which to beat her opponents, primarily the Spaniards and the Portuguese, refused to conform to these demands. Britain demanded Spain they and Portugal to sooner or later. And the very new nation of Brazil to declare slave trading to be piracy. And while these nations paid lip service to these principles, they failed to enforce them, which led to a British blockade of Brazil by 1850, which of course forced the nascent Brazilian Empire to capitulate. And it didn't end there. In the 1860s, David Livingston reports of Arab atrocities against enslaved Africans stirred up the interest of the British public, reviving the flagging abolitionist movement. Throughout the 1870s, the Navy attempted to suppress this abominable eastern trade at Zanzibar in particular. Needless to say, the British Navy Zanzibar. continued their mission against the slavers across the Indian Ocean. The abolition of slavery became the British project. Mm. It captured the hearts and minds of the entire country. Hold on, I actually still don't know why they just stopped it. Because I know that bastard dude, he, he don't just come out of nowhere and say, okay, stop slavery. His parent did, what did his parents tell him something like, because he is a man of culture, I'll, just, I'll say that for short. How do you, you just ended slavery, you just ended that. Britain didn't do that, Britain would not want to do that. All oh, it's all thanks to that bastard guy. He would. He did that. Britain didn't do that. They most likely wouldn't have wanted to do that. But the bastard dude. Because if the William guy, no, no uh, William the bastard is the guy I'm talking about. The other guy he killed to take the throne. That guy was still want slavery for sure. So this bastard guy, he had something on him. He was. He was different. I wonder. I wonder where he, he was a Viking. I heard so. He must have known about this slavery. So. I don't know what like what was going through his head. I'm actually still surprised, but good. From the highest good that lord he stopped to it. the lowest peasant, this is certainly how the British saw it. For example, had so much this influence of chivalry. We see it in acts of heroism by land and sea in fights against the slave trade. Alfred Tennyson, the unweary, unostentatious, and inglorious crusade of England so against slavery. So words, like no one ever understands them. As among the three or four perfectly virtuous pages comprised in the history of nations, William Lecky. All of I'll this was done against the vested financial interests of hundreds of thousands of people. Entire nations yeah. were against the idea of abolishing slavery and the slave trade. The very notion was alien yeah. to the human existence. The very people selling their Britain own people made. wanted that too. In the 19th century, until if you William the Conqueror made bearing it down on you, flying this flag, and you were a slave trader, you knew that this flag stood for liberty. This was the flag of a nation that defied human convention for a point of principle and spent its blood sounds all too good i'm not even against britain don't get me wrong i'm gonna see a comment they're like oh this guy is not grateful is you know slavery like they ended slavery they're the good guys all this yeah i like that i like that they ended slavery slavery i'm not i'm not against any of that at all i like the william guy for ending that he's a just person i'll say that but then at that time no one was it was like slavery was so normal no one could could think it's bad it's like
drinking water. Everybody knows drinking water is good. That's good for your body. Slavery makes you money. Go do slavery. Go, don't be a slave, be the master. You make money. That's how I went. So, what the heck was this William guy? Just confusing me. I don't know, it's not supposed to be that deep, but it's confusing me. But I'll say some more about this. Sweat, at the tears, end of the and video. treasure to enforce it on the world. This is the flag of the nation. This guy is proud, I can the hear. absolute moral truth that slavery is wrong. No matter what riches can be amassed, no it matter is what wrong. power can be gained, no matter the cost, slavery had to be abolished. That was the British Crusade. Mm. When Britain held the reins of world power, that is what she did with it. So, Frankie, to be honest with you, when you say we have streets named after slave owners, we have profited from a vile crime and feel no shame, it is British people that don't learn languages or British history. Britain is the true scrounger, the true criminal. I have hey, to Hey, but I don't think anybody cares at this point. British people apparently do not learn British history. Honestly, I don't really know that much American history too. I'm not I'm not that much of a history guy. I just for big important topics I, I look I look into them like this one right here. But when when it comes to people talking about oh so there's a statue of this racist guy, he used to be bad. Let's go destroy it, let's go vandalize it. I never understand that. That guy's dead. That guy is in a casket six feet deep. He has bones now. He doesn't care about you. Just let him rest. What if I don't know? It's like it was the, it's, it's like a trend. You guys know now there's so many trends. There's so much I can't even name one. But slavery, was it a trend? You could argue that it, it was a trend. Everybody's I mean not really. You're making money from it. I mean Mm, I guess it was a trend. I guess even some guys that were good people, they're like, I just want slaves. Because look, look, that guy, look how much money that guy's making. Let me just do what he's doing and maybe I'll make money. It's a trend. So imagine if it was the other way around and it's like a lot of white people are being sold from these European countries, being taken to Africa, and then Europe is making money. Let's say it was like that. So the black people would be the bad guys in that case. So anybody who got that, cause you know, all this goes, all this like blame, it usually goes to like, like, uh, like America and like all these, like, you never hear like any Spanish countries getting the blame for this. I swear no one ever talks about that because I don't know, no one talks about it. But then Brazil, all those countries, Portugal, Spain, those those dudes also had it, a bunch of it, and didn't want to stop it. But then you hear, because I'm not defending any of this, of course. I could really care less about defending them because I don't earn a single thing. I'm just speaking my mind right now. So that's how it goes. That's really because my thoughts about Britain's this. Britain's involvement in the slave trade is one of the most proud moments any nation could have had 